We have the battery on right now, but the best ones to kind of do with uh, before you throw your battery on is just to do the two front tanks up here. So what you do with the two front tanks, there's one right here and one on the other side. Now this one right here, both of them is going to be the same where you actually push up to pee. Without power, these ones will always work. Now in 227, this one, you can actually twist and lock it in place. And untwist it. So if it gets stuck, you understand why. On 216, it's just a little like the 44s where you push up. Um, on 216, so they stick. So you have to pull it down manually or it'll stay up there. It's very important to do that. So I sump on this side, then I slide the bucket to the other side and do the other side. It's the same exact thing. And you could technically do this afterwards too, um, with the battery off, either one. Again, you don't need power for this one here. You're gonna push it. Okay, now, after that, you wanna sump the actual tank sump one. Now, you don't wanna mix, I always do the filter last because the filter is gonna mix up, um, the, it has the boost pumps, right? It's gonna mix it up. So, now we're gonna slide this to, this one right here in the center, okay? Now on this one, you want battery on, boost pumps out, fuel valve off. If you turn the fuel valve on, it won't work. The fuel valve's not gonna mix up the fuel, so I'll just flip it on and show you. You hear that sound, that's when you know it's on. So if you ever leave the battery, um, if you ever, turn the battery off prior to turning off the fuel valve, it's gonna leave that solenoid attached and it's not gonna disconnect it. It's power operated forward and aft, so you have to disconnect it. You always hear it in a freak like that. But we'll look right here with the fuel, the fuel valve's on again, right? It doesn't work. If you turn it off, you hold this button down, and it comes out fully through there. Now, if it ever gets stuck, which sometimes happens, the best first solution is to pulsate that and see if it breaks loose that chunk that's in there and it drops out. Some mechanics don't like us doing that because it does it. If you sump it every day, it's not gonna have the issues, but if you wait too long, it will. Then you take your bucket and you slide to these vents right here, okay? This comes from the actual engine bay area and this filter is what we're testing. In this case here, this is when you're gonna stir up all the dirtiness. You flip the fuel valve on, boost pumps in, always do one first, pull it out, stick in the other one, and then stick in both of them together. It's the way to test both of them pretty easily. So push in, I look over there, see where she hits the minimum, pull it out, push the other one in, see if it hits minimum, push them both in. System's now charged. We're gonna come up into this section here, and there's a little tiny switch that you twist, a little tiny nozzle. It's gonna pee down this fluid into here, down into the actual engine bay. So what does that mean? It means if this is dirty, you're gonna get dirty fuel that comes through there, so don't stress out if you have it happen. Now when you twist this, it's gonna pee quite a bit, and oftentimes it fills up in the bottom there. So again, it's making it dirty. Now look down over here and you can see it coming out. Right through there. Give it a nice healthy one. After you're done, it spring loads closed. And I just manually push it down just a little further. So spring loads closed, it's not fully touching. Just to be extra cautious, I always do that there. It will eventually pee out through here. Fully emptying the bottom here. It'll smell like fuel. Um, I usually wipe it out. But again, if you're getting dirty and particles, it's often what's from. There's two, there's just one little hole right here um, that all the, all the fuel, fluid, fluids go through. Make sure that that isn't full, obviously, because then the fuel won't drain out of there either. So, and that's how you test the fuel uh, system right there. Make sure, again, you come over here, pull out the boost pumps after that, and turn the fuel valve off. Then you can turn off the power. Again, that little noise there that you just heard, if you ever turn off the battery prior to this, 
you will hear that as soon as you turn the power on and you know somebody left it attached. 